is Ephesians 5. Verse 15 says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Somebody say, understand what God's will is. And here's what the will of God is. Do not be drunk with wine. Look at your neighbor and say, stop drinking. Do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Turn to that same joke and say, be filled with the Spirit of God. Now, this is, an, this, is a, not a, this is not a suggestion from God. It's not an option. It's a command. Be filled with the Spirit. And, and what we need and what I'm praying for is that we don't have religious people in church. But Spirit-filled people in the church. We need spirit-filled people. We got a lot of folk who can do the church thing. But I'm crying that God will give us people who will have the spirit of God ruling and governing every aspect of your life. What I try to tell people, when the spirit is governing and guiding your life, he tells you where to go, what to do, what to say, who to be with, who to be with, who to leave alone. He talks with you and walks with you and communicates with you through his word and the reality is for you to live a victorious life you need to be spirit filled can I get an amen right there from somebody as a matter of fact when you get down to verse 22 through 33 he tells you why you need to be filled because wives need to submit to their own husbands they need to be filled with the Holy Ghost to do that Yeah, if you ain't filled with the Holy Ghost, you can't submit to your husband. You need the Holy Ghost to help you back down. Shut it down. That's my thing right there. You need the Holy Ghost to bring it on in. Because we know, ladies, that you know the answer to the dilemma before he knows there's even a question on the tape. But he also says you need the Holy Ghost to be filled with the Holy Ghost in verse 25 when it says, husbands, love your wives. You, brothers, you need the Holy Ghost to love her. The way she wants to be loved. I need God to get, fill me with his spirit to give him, and love my wife the way she needs to be loved. It's been a lifelong journey for me to learn. It's a moving target. A few people know what I'm talking about, y'all. No, let me say this. I know a lot of y'all know what I'm All of y'all know what I'm talking about, but a few of y'all are willing to admit that you know what I'm talking about. It's a moving target, but it's okay. God gives me the power and fills me with the spirit and gives me the desire and the want to love her desire. And so, and so he says here, and I, I, I love the way God works this out. He tells us right here um, why we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. A wife needs to be uh, willing to submit to her husband. That takes the Holy Spirit. A husband needs to love his wife the same way that Christ loved the church. And Jesus loved the church so much so he was willing to die for the church. I thought the ladies would say amen real loud on that point right there. Amen. And, and so that's why we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and so that's my prayer. That's my longing to God that we would be filled. Now, I don't want you to hear me say, get the Holy Spirit. Because the reality is, when you accepted Jesus, the Holy Ghost came to live inside of you. Yeah, you don't have to 
I'm not, I'm not preaching to get the Holy Ghost. If you save, you have the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Romans that if you don't have the Spirit of God, you're not one of his disciples. When you got saved, the Holy Spirit came and took residency in your heart, in your spirit. The question is not whether you have him, but does he have you? Oh, I wish I could get a few more amens on that point. That's really the ultimate question of how much of you does the Holy Ghost have? And the desire of God is for the Holy Ghost to have all of you, all of your heart, all of you, all of your spirit. And so, uh, uh, um, you know, when I was growing up in church, right in First Baptist Church, Glen Arden, we used to, um, you know, say things, and, and I used to get scared because if somebody started to, Jumping and shouting and hucking and a bucking. <laughs> Screaming and a hollering. There was a day we did, we, we got over, we got filled or overcome with something. And sometimes it was the spirit of God. Sometimes it wasn't the spirit of God. Sometimes it was just emotions and people hollered and screamed and wailed and beat up everybody on their row. And <laughs> the Holy Ghost is a gentleman. Yeah, he, he never forces himself on you, and he doesn't make you do anything. Amen. He'll suggest, go ahead and raise your hands and worship him, he'll say. He'll suggest, step out in the aisle and go ahead and cut a dance for him. He'll suggest for you to open your mouth and give God some praise. But he will never force himself on you. He will never take control of you to where you lose control. If you lost control, it's a spirit, but it ain't the Holy Spirit. I wish y'all knew the Bible. I wish I, I had some people who understood. The, the, the Spirit of God uh, wants to fill us with his power and his presence. And this command here says to us to be filled, and this is an important point. I'm just talking to y'all. I'm going to pray in just a little bit. But being filled is not a suggestion. It's a command from God. Be filled. That's what he's telling us. And it's not, listen to me, it's not a one-time deal. You don't get filled one day and then it does you for the rest of your life. This, in the, in the Greek, this word means it's a continual process. So, so, so it's like, it's like you, you, you drive your car, you run out of gas, you need to come back and get recharged. It's, and so it's the, you got the Holy Ghost who's leading and guiding you. He gets, he, he feel, you are filled with his power and presence. He has full control of you, but day by day, slowly by slowly, you start taking the reins back from him. I want y'all, do y'all hear what I'm saying to you today? It's not that you ain't losing him. He don't come in buckets or, or gallons. I don't, I don't want you to get that feeling. But how much of you does he have control of? And as every day goes by and every week goes by, sometimes our flesh rises back up and takes control of the reins. And we got to come back to a place where we humble ourselves before God and say, I don't know how to drive this ship. I don't know how to ride this plane. I don't know how to do what I need to do. I slowly took charge, and so I give myself away back to you, God. And some of you are living your lives right now pulling the reins and controlling the shots and doing what you want to do, but our prayer ought to be, God, you take the reins. It's a, continue, it's a process that goes over repeatedly. And that's why I got to be in church every Sunday because there's something about the gathering of the believers <laughs> that helps renew my strength. So, so he tells us, he tells us in, in uh, our, uh, thank you, verse 18, be filled with the Spirit. And then he tells us right after that, things we can do to facilitate the power and presence of God. What does it, what does it take? Number one, it's right here in verse number 19. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Y'all see that? I'm calling that point that God wants us to learn how to speak, 
sing to yourself, others, and God. Speaking and singing to yourself, to others, and to God. Now this is, this, is, this is the things we do to facilitate the presence of God. This has to do with your conversation. If you have the King James Version, it says speaking to yourself. The New King James says speaking to one another. Uh, but the key here is, the key of what it's saying here uh, in the Greek is that you are saying the right things. Speaking and singing the right thing. So this is key because the scripture says sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. It's something that facilitates the power and presence of God when you sing the right songs. Now some of y'all know I'm a Temptation fan. I love the Temptations. But I had to put them away. Somebody gave me a CD case, the anthology set of the Temptations. Every song they ever made from 19 whatever to 19, 2000 whatever, every song. And I would get into that music. I know you want to leave me. <laughs> but I refuse to let you go. If I have to beg, plead for your sympathy. I don't mind because you mean that much to me. Ain't too proud to beg. Please don't leave me, girl. I'm glad somebody know that song. It's great if you're talking about your wife. So if they ain't talking about their wife. Oh, sunshine, blue skies. Please go away. My girl has found another and gone away. Listen to what this song said. With her went my future. My life is filled with gloom. So day after day, I stay locked up in my room. I know to you, it might sound strange. But I wish it would rain. You ain't gonna be filled with the Holy Ghost singing that song right there. Here's another non spiritual song I can turn the gray sky blue, I can make it rain. Whenever I wanted to, oh, build a castle from a single grain of sand. I can make a ship sail on dry land. But my life is so incomplete and I'm so blue. Cause I can't get next to you. Can't get next to you. Can't get next to you, girl. Can't get next to you. This is a song about a guy who's upset because he can't have sex with his girlfriend. You ain't gonna get filled with the Holy Ghost singing that song. Look at your neighbor and say, you gotta learn to sing the right song. The words that come out of your mouth, listen to me carefully, this is very important to your life. This is very important to your life. The music that you sing, the words that come out of your mouth will either set an atmosphere to welcome the power of the Holy Spirit or reject the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The words that come out of your mind, you can say what you want to say, but you're either inviting the power and presence of God to rule and reign in your life or you are rejecting it. You got to sing the kind of songs that's creating an environment where the Holy Spirit feels welcome. That's why I like to sing, here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. Or maybe I've started singing lately, I surrender all to you. 
everything I give to you withholding nothing withholding nothing I give myself away so you can use me or maybe I sing sometimes steadfast and true is your love toward us daily renewed is your mercy shown us God of all gods truly amazing amazing for your love is an everlasting love your grace is sufficient for us your truth leads us to freedom that's even her song y'all because y'all don't know it amazing amazing Sometimes I'm saying I'm expecting God to move for me. The blessing he has shown in store for me, I receive. I'm waiting for my harvest. It's coming to me. I believe what he said. He has never failed me yet. I am waiting for my harvest. It's coming to me. I don't know just how he's going to do it, but I know that he's going to do something. I don't know how he'll meet the need. All I know is that he's going to do something. I don't know how he will save the day, but I know that he's going to do something. All I know is that somehow, some way, he is going to do something. Sometimes I sing, I've been changed, healed, freed, delivered. I wish y'all knew these songs. I found joy peace, grace, and favor. Right now is the moment. Today is the day. I've been changed. I've been changed. I've waited for this moment to come and I won't let it pass me by. I like this chorus. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before his presence came and changed me. What you sing will dictate whether the Holy Ghost has freedom and power to rule in your life. Do you, are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? Speak the right words, say the right things. It welcomes the power and presence of the Holy Ghost. But he doesn't stop there. I got to hurry up. He says, not only do you speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, may, singing and making melody to, in your heart to the Lord, but in verse 20, he says, give thanks always. Look at your neighbor and say, give thanks always. Matter of fact, here's the point. It says, give thanks always for all things. Here's how you welcome the presence of God is when you get to a capacity where you're willing to give God thanks for everything. Now this is a tension-filled moment I know in life because some of you have got some things that have happened in your life that you don't see how you could ever thank God for. There's some drama and some pain and I feel the tension, I feel the kickback, I feel the thoughts coming. How can I thank God for this and why can I thank God for that and how can I thank God that this happened and that happened and, I, and, and here's what I'm trying to tell you. When you get to a place of believing and trusting God and knowing how much he loves you, you will recognize that before anything could happen in your life God had to give permission for it to happen and if you could not handle it it would not have happened but it happened to you because he knew you could handle it somebody look at your name and say you can handle it look at him on the other side say you can handle it you can take a licking and keep on ticking I know it made tears fall down your face, but guess what? The things that cause the tears to fall down your face are the same things that cause you to fall on your knees and reach out to a holy God. The things that brought you pain in your past are the very things that shaped your character to be the person that you are today. You ought to thank God for every tear that you cried, every burden that you went through. When you get to the place that you can give God praise, you are welcoming the presence of God. Some of the most difficult times in my life, some of the most horrific, painful experience of my journey have been things that launched me to a higher dimension in my walk with God. 
And so I've learned during the course of my life just to give him praise. Here's what Romans 8.28 says, and we know. Don't run ahead of me, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to preach this long. And we know. I like that. He didn't say we think. He didn't say we assume. He didn't say we hope. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. I don't know about y'all, but I love him today. And I can give him praise for everything that has happened in my past, everything that's happening right now, and I can go ahead and give him praise for whatever will happen in my future. I trust God that he's got my back. I trust God that he's already mapped a course for my life. I trust God that he has my life in his hands. Welcome the presence of God by learning to give him thanks. We're going to gather around this altar in just a few moments. And I want to encourage you to begin to give God thanks for the things that you used to couldn't give him thanks for. It may still cause you to cry. But recognize that even though you might not be able to see it today, there will come a day where God, listen to this, will give you beauty for your ashes. There are some things that he'll we'll understand it better by and by. Some of we'll, we'll get an understanding about it later, but you know what? My trust in God is so wonderful, it's so awesome that even though I may not understand it today, I know given time he's going to make it plain and clear and i be able to, I don't have to wait till I get the understanding to thank him. I trust him enough to go ahead and give him the thanks right now even when I don't have the full understanding. Can I give you this one last point? It is right here in verse number 21. Submitting to one another in the fear of God. This deals with your will. You want to be filled with the spirit of God, you got to be willing to take the back seat. You have to be willing to become a, a submission. In other words, all of life and all of your family and all of your marriage ain't about you. You get sub. You have to become sub. You got to go under. Amen. Some of you will never be filled with the power of God because it's all about you. It's all about your life. It's all about what you want. And some of you think you've done something great because every now and then you yield. We're called to live a lifestyle of submitting to one another. Can I get an amen right there from me? Y'all were getting quiet. The amens were getting lower and lower and lower. That's the will of God. If you want to be filled, and, and matter of fact, this command is be filled, and he tells us what, what we ought to do to, pre, to prepare for that. Sing the right song. Amen. Give God thanks for all things. Submit out of your will and get under the will of God. Who wants to be filled with the power and presence of God? Make your way on down here with me. Come on with me real quick. Hallelujah. Yeah, just get on up. Come on down here. Amen. It's a little bit different from what's normal. We're going to go over. We're going to be overtime today. Overtime. God knows I want to pray that God gives us a church of people who want to be filled with the power and presence of God. Come as close as y'all can. Proud of you. We're just going to ask God to fill us. We're going to ask God to touch our lives and hearts and fill us. That's what I want. I want the power and presence of God. I don't want to run my life no more. Take these three thoughts in mind. What songs have you been singing? Some of y'all need to make a decision to sing a different song. Some of you need to make a decision to talk a different language. 
Some of you need to apologize to God because of how you've been speaking to others and to yourself has not been the right, the right things. We have to create an environment to welcome God. We're going to do that in just a moment by worshiping him. We're called to give him thanks in all things. Think about the thing that you haven't been able to thank God for, and we're going to spend just a moment in just a minute and thank God for it. Then we got to think about where, where are those areas I need to submit. Amen? Amen? Go ahead, let's begin right in the process. Go ahead, let's begin. Hallelujah. Open your mouth and say it loud just for a moment. Father, thank you. God, we want to be filled with your power and presence. We don't want to run our lives. We come to you to say, Lord, we're, we're going to withhold nothing now. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. We're going to yield everything to you. Withholding nothing. We're not going to, we're not going to create an atmosphere to welcome the devil, God. We want to create an atmosphere to welcome your power and presence. We want to give you thanks. Give, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the stuff that we used to complain about and be bitter about. We release that bitterness. We release that anger. We're no longer angry or mad about it. We don't resent it. But God, we know that something good is going to come out of what it is that's happened in our lives. And even though it may not be apparent to us right now, it does not yet appear what we shall be. But God, I thank you. We thank you because we know something positive is coming out of everything. Thank you for the storm. Thank you for the rain. Thank you for every situation, God. We thank you in and for all things. We are grateful that you gave us what we needed to be able to still be here even after we've gone through what we've gone through. Hallelujah. Father, we come to submit ourselves to you, be yielded to you, Lord. We surrender everything. We submit our will to yours. Now, God, fill us, Lord. Fill us, Father, with the power of your spirit and presence in the name of Jesus. Now, go ahead and give him praise and thanks. And go ahead. Today's dynamic message from Pastor Jenkins is one that has the power to change your life, but it can only do so if you have a heart and soul that belong to Jesus Christ. Perhaps you want to be able to make such a claim, but you don't know how. It's simple. You just have to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and rose again with all power. Your sins are now forgiven, and you're part of the family of God. Welcome. Maybe you're already saved and in need of a church home, one that will nurture your growth and development as a Christian. Or perhaps you were once in fellowship with God, but have since drifted away and are ready to return to your first love. Whatever the case, we'd love to have you become a part of the First Baptist family. Simply contact us at 301-773-3600 or visit our website at www.fbcglenarden.org for more information on any one of our four convenient services or our 100 plus ministries designed to meet your most intimate needs. First Baptist Church of Glen Arden, where God is developing dynamic disciples. Hey.